Yo, 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 yo. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Max and Juan cast. Max, how you doing tonight, my brother? Doing good, one. How about you? Preseason football? You excited? All the yeah. hype for playing backups and shit? Your favorite? <laughs> Joe Milton out here fucking wrecking ankles and shit. <laughs> I, uh, I, I love how we're at that point of the year where we're just so starved for like narratives. It's Damn. just like, let's just pump out whatever. It's kind of like we were talking about, like, it's always like this guy's having a hell of an off season or just like, what's the word? Like, who's who's like always that guy? It's like breakout. It's like Ben Simmons with the free throws and like three pointers. Like, how many off seasons have you seen like him just like throwing? I mean, shooting shots. You're like, oh, breakout <laughs> coming. Yeah. It's kind of like, I'm sure Justin Fields has had some. Or it's like, wow, he's really putting the work in the lab. Now it's all together when he's throwing against air. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like that with rookies now, too. Like Malik Neighbors is getting a lot of buzz. Yeah. No, and it's kind of like I, I hate when they do that and they show, like, the routes against nobody. It was kind of like how – remember when Tebow came out? He had the throwing motion thing. Yeah. And they're like, oh, he's he tightened it up in, like, first week of preseason. <laughs> like, didn't stick. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we appreciate you guys dropping by. Uh, welcome to the Max and Juan cast. We are doing NFC South today for NFL preview slash over unders. Uh, welcome to the series. We do every single team, every single division. Uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, all that good stuff. I know I am lagging right now. I apologize to the audience. I promise they can hear me clearly, though. My camera is just lagging uh but we're ready to go we're ready to rock max any beginning intros for the nfc south before we get into it how about how do you feel about this division overall i mean last year it was just a big mosh pit of guy like it was like hey who wants to not be a little mediocre last year i thought it was atlanta's division to lose they absolutely lost it, uh, and Tampa Bay kind of just pe- did enough to win it. They won yeah. a playoff game against the Eagles, who were imploding. The Saints were kind of what we thought they'd be, a letdown. Carolina was bad, but I don't think me and you – I think I said they'd be over last year. And I was completely they went wrong. Out, I You said yeah, under. Frank Wright. Did I? Yeah, I went over, and I have terrible, terrible pick. Well, here's the thing. I still, I, you know, obviously Frank Wright, did he do that bad of a job in Indy one? Not really. Like he just never had the quarterback, gets his quarterback in Bryce Young. Obviously, one year it looks like he didn't pick the right guy. And it got bad and it got bad quick. And this is a situation where, hey, Bryce Young's in year two. We talked about it with Trevor Lawrence the other episode. Hey, if he's going to be a bust, that was the great first year to have be a bust. It was like, hey, you want to make him a bust? Let's be horrible, not functioning, not have a team around them, and let's hire a new coach, a new coaching staff. Because when you know this, I'm sure they went in there saying, you know, we have Bryce Young, we believe in him. But that coaching staff's not tied to him. Yeah. If it's another bad year, what are they going to do? Oh, we get somebody new. Right. Yeah. It doesn't matter he was the first pick. It doesn't matter. Look, to me, this, this division is is mediocrity, bro. It is. Uh, it's not that good. I think, arguably, it's the worst division in football. Don't you think? Yeah, I mean, it definitely has the potential. I mean, last year, what were the Tampa Bay? They were 9-8, and eight and they won their division. Yeah. Not that great. Yeah, And not- it doesn't look like any team got that much better this year. Would you agree? Yeah. It, uh, the Falcons got the got because they got, they got yeah. at the position though. It wasn't like damn they added fifteen pieces. It was like, hey, we might just solve the problem because don't. I mean, I feel like if Atlanta had Justin Fields last year, they win twelve games. Yeah. Is that are you? Is that fair to say? Yeah, that's fair. All right, let's get into the first team, uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Their head coach is coming back, Todd Bowles, Liam Cohen. Uh, as OC and the DC is technically Todd Bulls. Uh, 2023 record nine and eight. They won the division. 
Uh, their over under for 2024 is seven and a half wins. Look, um, it was it was a happy story. It was a great story to to look at in the NFL with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, especially with Baker Mayfield uh, resurgence. Uh, he played amazing. He did. He he played like vintage Baker, um, number one pick type of dude. You know, swagger, uh, big boy throws, big balls, and just making plays <laughs> out there. Like he was, he he played really good. No, man. you're right. Yeah, I'm and they be, laughing at the analogy. Let, yeah. Let's just be honest. I mean, they beat the shit out of the Eagles, bro. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely in wild card. And hey, they didn't get punked by the Lions. It was a close game. Yeah, they put up a fight. Yeah, they put up a fight. a fight. And look, I just feel I don't know if it's maybe because there's nothing exciting about this team. Like overall, you look at their roster. No, really good running back to write home about Mike Evans, pencil him in thousand yards, 10 TDs. We know what he's going to do, but he's not at the point of career where Mike Evans is a top five receiver. He's top 10. He's at the like, lower half of that list. No, no shots being thrown. He's 30. He's been in the league. What one, like 10 years almost. Yeah. And it's kind of their offense to me is it's not really good. It's not really bad. It's like middling. Right. And same, I would say the same thing about the defense. This is the Super Bowl defense that wrecked Mahomes. It's, a lot of guys were past their prime, and a lot of guys were getting older, and they've had some new faces. And Devin White is gone. Carlton Davis is gone. Jordan Whitehead, I think, is returning. But think about the pass rush. There's no Shaq Barrett. Who's going to rush the passer for this team? Like they have Kal- they got Kalaji Kansi last year, right? Yeah. Vita Vea is still a monster in the middle. But who's coming off the edge for this team? Well, I love um, Chris Braswell. They got the kid from Alabama. He's very solid. Um, I like their defensive line. I like their defense in general. I think they're going to be fine on the defensive end, especially with Todd Bowles uh, manning the ship. But to me, it comes down it, it comes down to this, Max. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to fix my camera because it's all messed up. It comes down to this. Baker Mayfield is a middling quarterback as much as we love him as as fun as he was last year he's a middle of the pack type of dude and let's be honest their ceiling is what they did last year that's their ceiling i don't see them getting any better and i feel like that's the worst place to be in football because one you're never really improving because you're picking at like 20 in the fucking draft you're not going to get a (laughs) <laughs> difference maker in the draft you got to be a really good drafting uh team and to, to me it's like how are you trying to get better to get over that hump what move did they do to get over that hump this year and you look at it and it's like nothing absolutely nothing and some teams are happy with that some teams are like hey give me the playoff berth and give me the 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 division champ and let us win a playoff game, maybe, you know, get a home playoff game, make some money, and we're cool with that. I, I, I but, agree. I agree. It, it, it's a problem, though. It's a problem. It, it would suck for me to be a Tampa Bay fan of, like, I know our ceiling. I It's not a Super Bowl. I just don't even see where you could think, like, 12 games is realistic. I think Tampa Bay is good. But like you said, they didn't get better. I'm not like, wow, you added all these guys. Even when you look at their team from last year, who's the young guy you're like waiting to break out? Joe uh, Tryon Shranka? I, I think edge? not really. I think it's Kalijah. I, I think that's the one guy that I really love on their team. Yeah, but my, my, point, my point of it is you look at the Eagles, and just using an example, it's like, damn, they got Jordan Davis who could break out. They got Nolan Smith who really young and untapped, then Kobe Dean. Jordan Davis. The Bucks don't have this like super young roster. There's not a lot of young guys. It's kind of a weird mismatch of guys holdovers from the Super Bowl. And then they have a couple young guys here. Like looking at the offense, they got Rashad White, Bucky Irving. I mean, Rashad White's a fine back, but do you see him having like, oh, wow, he's a difference maker? I don't see that. Right. And same thing with the receivers. They got Jalen McMillan, who I'm I liked coming out, but I don't love him. Like I said, Mike Evans, we know what he is, but there's there's no one you're like, damn, they, they have a buttoning guy. And that's what kind of the problem to me the team is. And, I mean, Vegas thinks it too, seven and a half. They don't have that much faith in the Bucs. And I think I think last year was like their dream year for Baker. Right. Personally, like I think Baker, if he has the best year of his career, he's like the 10th best quarterback in football, right? Maybe yeah. like 10. 
maybe 10. Mm -hmm. And what do you, are you really going to replicate that again? It's going to be hard. It's going to be extremely hard. That's my hard. point. So it, it's kind of so like, it, you know what it reminds me of on a lesser scale, just because on the talent aspect, the Seattle Seahawks with Geno Smith. Yeah. No, I, I, I could see that. And seven and a half is scary because this is definitely a team that has veterans and they could win eight games. But I think this is this is not going to be the dream year it was last year. I'm going to go under one. Yeah, I'm riding with you. I'm going to go under as well. I think the Falcons got better in this division. Uh, as we keep on talking about it, I think uh, the Saints and the Panthers are going to improve somewhat uh, in this division. I don't think they're going to be as bad. Uh, I think the Bucks are going to take a step back. And they're going to have to really look at themselves in the mirror and be like, who do we want to be? Do we want to be this middling team? And be decent every year? Or do we want to just, hey, tear it down a little bit. Let's let's take a a big strike, a, a, a big swing, and go at a guy in the draft like a quarterback and maybe, you know, flip Baker and go that route. You know, because I, I just, I don't think Baker is going to be that guy. And, and especially with this roster, he's not going to be the guy. Yeah, exactly. So under uh, for the Bucks, okay. Uh, anything else on on Tampa Bay, Max? No, it's a very middling team, like you said, and I I think you could say the same for the next team. Yeah, in all honesty, and that's the Saints, correct? Yeah, it's the Saints, uh, led by X Raider <laughs> Dennis <laughs> Allen, uh, Clint Kubiak is calling the plays is a first year court or first year with the saints and they have joe woods as well last year they were nine and eight missed the playoffs and it kind of surprised me they went nine and eight one they they seemed to me at times last year to be a disaster and then there were times i was like this could be a really fun team and a really scary team and i feel like that's what we're going to get this year i don't think dennis allen's that great of a coach he's a better coordinator than he is a coach and, yeah, well, they've added some young guys you're excited about. Like, hey, Fuanga, you loved him coming out of Oregon State. Yeah. Kool-Aid McKintry, the corner. Uh, they took a flyer on Chase Young, which I kind of like that move because you never know. Like, three years ago, one after the rookie year, we are like, this guy's untradeable. No one would trade – like, you couldn't trade for him. And now he's nothing really in the league. He's just an ordinary edge rusher with some, like, upside. They got Willie Gay off the Chiefs and – I mean, this all seems like fine moves, but does it change your idea of the Saints? Like, hey, is Derek Carr going to have one of those Derek Carr years? Does he do for one where he's like, damn, they're 12 and 4. He did just enough to get that 10th contract. Yeah. No, I I, I don't believe in it. Uh, I feel like it's, it's, make, it's, it's make or break this year with Dennis Allen and Derek Carr. Like, I love Derek Carr. Um, I think Still? he, I do, I do. He's always gonna be a Raider. Uh, you love his competitiveness, all that shit. Like he's great as a teammate, but you need a lot around him to succeed. And I think last year, the Saints obviously paid him and really built around him, like if he was like a top ten guy. And I'm sorry to say. He gives you those signs like he's a honey dicker, bro. He may he may look like a top ten guy, but in reality, and he, he's he's just he's just one of those dudes that need a lot. He he needs some and, some. And things. I was just gonna interrupt you. you say he had thirty nine hundred yards last year, twenty five TDs, eight picks. It sounds great, it mm -hmm. sounds really good. But there were so many times last year you'd be like, I want, I need more. We yeah. just need a little bit more, right? So and continue, then I'm sorry. And then of course, uh, some some of the the losses. It's not even that big. Jameis Winston and Michael Thomas. I think it was time to move off of My Michael Thomas. He's pretty much done, in my opinion. Uh, and Jameis Winston. I mean, you know, good riddance. Uh, he was a cool. He was a cool like media guy. But at the end of the day, like Jameis wasn't gonna take over for the Saints. Uh, but look, I think we can have a real conversation here, Max, on this team starting off one and four, one and five, and Dennis Allen being the first coach fired. How do you feel about that? It's funny because we, we had that we had that discussion 
when we got off last time, I was like, who thinks first coach fired? And I can't remember all the names we said, but I was like, when I said Dennis Allen, you were like, oh, yeah, give me those. <laughs> like, you were like ready to make a parlay on something with those odds. And, yeah. I mean, what is this, year three? Year three for him, and it's yeah. eight, nine, nine, and eight, no quarterback. You got him. It doesn't look that great. They're and, in I mean, salary cap hell. Still, still in yeah. salary. I mean, again, it's not the worst roster in sports. I mean, they got Kamara. Olave's a stud. Uh, Fuanga's going to be big. Obviously, Ryan Ramschek, you wish you had him. Yeah. Trevor Penning's been a bust. And, I mean, I think that it's time to talk about the defense as well. That defense is old. Still have some playmakers. And, hey, I think if Chase Young can hit, Willie Gay's going to help. And if uh, Kool-Aid can be lethal, like, they could really get the defense going. I, I mean, I can see the... I can see like the growth of part of the team, right? I can see the defense kind of having a resurgence. Yeah, but I just don't have faith in Derek Carr in the offense. Excuse me, I just I just don't. It's too many games where it's like we need this one and he don't deliver. Yeah, and, and I think maybe you can attest to that better than I can as a Raider fan, as someone who's just, watched it, Derek Carr week in and week out because you love him one week and yeah. you want to kill him the next, right? Yeah, yeah. It's very frustrating. It's very frustrating. You need a very tight structure around him. And it, it really does suck because throughout Derek Carr's whole career, he really has had mediocre coaches. Like, I don't think the coaching staff is all that good with the saints. Like, I think he could have been, he could have went to a better situation on the offensive side, at least, and got some better coaching, but I don't trust Dennis Allen. I don't trust Derek Carr. And the defense, it's old at the end of the day. Like, they're, Cam Jordan is old, like you said. Like, Marshawn Lattimore, I can see him walking after this year, like trading him, being unhappy, and the defense just falls apart, and all of a sudden they're in rebuild mode with a new coach. You know, so this is the year. There's no excuse. I feel like they're more than good enough to at least win their division. Number two, the NFC is wide open as far as making the playoffs it's not like the afc where there's limited spots there's plenty of spots to go around in the nfc it's weak and the saints need to do something but i'm gonna go the under okay i'm not that confident in them uh i think i can easily see seven and a half by the way just like tampa bay yeah i can see them winning seven games at most I'm not riding with them. I'm not getting. I'm going to go over. Wow. How many games? You think uh, eight? <laughs> eight. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Eight. Maybe they can repeat last year because, again, there's talent on this roster. But, I mean, again, I it's it's not a it's not like a for sure thing. Like, I feel like better about the Bucks than I do about them because they are such a wishy-washy team. Yeah. Most definitely. And then not to mention Derek Carr. Uh, gets hurt a lot. Correct. Always, and they always, have Jake Hayner and Spencer up. Rattler and Who Taysom Hill. I wouldn't mind getting a look at, at Jake Hayner. You know how I like Jake Hayner, Fresno, Fresno State. Mini, mini Derek Carr right there. Um, <laughs> talking about players that can ascend, you know, take that leap. I want to talk about two guys, one of them being yours, the other one being a little bit more of mine. Uh, first one, obviously, is Chris Alave. What do you think a realistic leap for him could be like moving into the top tier receivers as far as being like a top Correct. 15 top guy. 10. Top 10. I mean, yeah. are there's like, we, t- we say it all the time. There's like 20 top 10 receivers. It's just a matter of, can he get enough balls thrown his way that are when he's open? And is it, can he stay healthy? Cause he keeps, he gets banged up, you know, concussion, the ankle here. Yeah. But I mean, I think he's been as good as advertised coming out. Right. Like, he's been very fucking good. It's not his fault. The team around them's kind of suffered. Yeah. And the second guy I want to bring up is the running back from TCU uh, that was uh, banged up last year. Uh, I'm forgetting his name, Max, but Kendry Miller. Ken- are these both? These are both my guys. I love Kendry. Miller yeah. Kendry out. Miller. I, I think there's a real chance that Kendry Miller can take over the majority of the snaps due to Kamara getting hurt or Kamara just lessening the workload because he's not Alvin Kamara no more and Kendry Miller just yeah, really but taking some good a, reps. He's got to get healthy too because he's he suffered some 
health issues, unfortunately. Yeah, last year, last yeah. year it was it was a health thing. I felt like like he was very very limited, but I I think that's a possible guy for a big leap on their team. Kendry Miller, Chris Olave go to the youth movement, and you know maybe it's time for Cam Jordan and Alvin Kamara, guys of the past of the Sean Payton era, to take a seat back and kind of just you know go with the go with the motion of things. Mm-hmm. All right, Max. So we both uh, going under for the Saints, correct? You're correct. No, I'm going over. I'm going over. Oh, you're going over. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the Falcons. You're good. Good. Ready. Okay. Let's move on to the Atlanta Falcons, who are bringing in a new coaching staff. They got rid of uh, Arthur Smith. Arthur Smith, the the medieval uh, Arthur Smith. Uh, Raheem Morris is coming over from the L.A. Rams uh, defense coordinator taking over the job. O.C. Zach Robinson is also coming along, who is also a former Ram. Uh, D.C. Jimmy Lake, uh, 2023 record was 7-10. and They're over under this year is 9.5. Very, very big. The reason why it moved up so much, they got Kirk Cousins. They got Kirk O'Bain. And Michael Penix. And Michael Penix. They're going to run a two-quarterback system, if you didn't hear. Uh, <laughs> Rook uh, Okahoro. Yeah, Aroro. Oh, uh, I love how you just don't remember the draft enunciations. You just, yes. They just flush them. Oh, my goodness. I never got that one from the beginning. Uh, <laughs> Darnell Mooney, uh, and also a guy that they uh, added wide receiver from. They the, also uh, had Rondale Moore. Who, but he got hurt and he's out for the year, which I think is a big lot. It was a fun piece to play with. Right. Sorry, just wanted to throw that little. It just happened yeah. yesterday. I wanted to throw that nugget in there. Uh, Desmond Ritter, uh, key losses. Is that a key loss, Max? Why Why'd you put that? Uh, you got to put something. <laughs> they had nobody. Who, who cares? John U. Smith. Yeah, John U. Smith and Cordell Patterson, uh, future Hall of Famer right there. Yes, he flashed me. <laughs> okay so the atlanta falcons max we fucking ripped on them during the draft hardcore really so bad. left lefty or righty who do you want to start you go with Kirk cousins you paid him all that money uh i like i guess michael Penix is a is a insurance policy i don't care what he is you start Kirk cousins you paid Kirk cousins it's Kirk cousins team uh, you let Michael Penix sit, even though I I don't think that makes any type of sense. I don't think you really can justify it. It's just really a thing where I guess they just went off of their big board. You know, they went with with talents, and that was the best guy, and they picked them. Even in the Giants' hard knocks, he they were like, Atlanta wants Dallas Turner. We're gonna take an edge. Like yeah. everything we've heard, and it's kind of like I. Again, I, I know it's hard knocks, and but I'm just saying, even the GMs have these informations that we have sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, you know, it's a game of what you leak, game of what you hear. And even if they were like, oh, he's taking, they're taking a edge. It's kind of like I bet through everyone for a loop, and I'm sure as the years go on, we'll hear more about it. Yeah, most definitely. Um, look, I have faith in the Atlanta Falcons. I think they're gonna put it together this year. I really like the pieces that they have, okay? Regardless, even if they were starting Michael Penix, I love the roster that they have around him. Uh, Drake London, a leap guy. Kyle Pitts has been a leap guy for like fucking three years, it seems like. I feel like he can finally get out of that Arthur Smith hell that he was in yeah. being a decoy. Bijan Robinson losing carries to Tyler Algier. Like, yeah. Like, hey, I like Tyler Algier. He's cool. Mm-hmm. Give the fucking ball to the seventh pick in the draft. Right. Do it. Right. Um, the O line is really good. The defense was good last year, and they've added some pieces, which I've liked. They got a guy, like you said, um, Aruko Rotoro. They got um Trice from Washington, who was not my favorite, but again, it's just more talent. Yeah. They have Jesse Bates coming off an all pro year. Richie Grant, I like. AJ Terrell, who's just one year away, just have one good year and you do the best corner it's, of football. It's really the the defensive line because who's their their best defensive lineman? Grady Jarrett. Grady Jarrett, still, I would say, yeah, they're gonna yeah. have to find ways to manufacture pressure. But Raheem Mostert is Raheem Mostert. Sorry, Raheem Morris 
mm-hmm. is a good DC. Mm-hmm. And it's not just for like a year or two. He, he masterminded the Rams DC, the defense, excuse me, when they beat the, when they won the Super Bowl. Right. So obviously it does scare me because one, Michael Penix is a rookie, two, Kirk Cousins coming off the Achilles, but I'm not going to let that scare me away from taking the over. I'm going to say it right now. I think they'll go over. They have so much talent on offense. Like this could be the best offense in football. It really yeah. could. Yeah. And how do you feel? I, I mentioned Kyle Pitts. How do you feel about him, Max? Do you do you feel like it's, it's over? Just, like, are you no, done? It just ha- so, please, it, dude, he has been a top ten tight end in football since he entered. It's hard to it's hard to get stats when every ball's thrown over your head by ten yards. Like they're uncatchable. I don't blame him for his lack of usage and his lack of production when the quarterback sucked and the Arthur Smith would use him as a decoy because of how talented he is. Hey. I could point out to like 20 plays where I'm like, hey, Michael Pruitt or whoever their backup tight end is last year, he caught that ball wide open because Kyle Pitts just cleared everybody out for him. Yeah. And to me, it was like Matt Collins was getting more touches than Kyle Pitts. How? <laughs> How does that make sense, right? Love Matt. Yeah. Matt Collins, he go great, won a Super Bowl with him. You know, that, that can't happen. Of a player. That just can't happen. Yeah, it can't happen. It can't Correct. happen. It can't happen. It just uh, can't happen. And what holds this team back? I feel like the only thing that holds this team back is, again, the quarterback. And it's either Kirk's not ready to go and Penix, we have our concerns. I have my concerns. You like, you love the guy. You really liked him. Now, again, I don't agree with the pick. I think it's stupid to this day. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. But I would have loved to just see him thrown out there into the Wolves with this team rather than having to hold a clipboard for a year or two. And look, you got to look at it from this perspective. Uh, I like to call it like the T-ball effect of the quarterback on the bench that everyone knows. And once Kirk starts struggling, how fast are people going to turn on Kirk Cousins and be like, let's get Michael Penix in here? Uh, Here's another example on Carson Wentz was arguably the MVP the year the Eagles won the Super Bowl, correct? Yes. Did the Eagles' offense ever look as good with Nick Foles as it with Carson Wentz? Probably not. Not for that that stretch of games. Yeah. But when Carson Wentz came back and Nick Foles went back to being the backup, any bad game, it was just like, well, when we put in Nick Foles? Right. When's he coming in? Every When's he coming time. in? Mm-hmm. And I could honestly say I bet that played a big factor in fracturing people's locker room, Carson Wentz feeling some type of way. And, I mean, every, every right, like, what's Michael Penix going to do when he's like, I'm fucking better than this guy. And half yeah. the team knows it, but management doesn't want to do it. Or yeah. vice versa. What if they like Kirk Cousins like, I know I'm better than this guy. And they're losing a couple of games because Penix has to play. And it's just, it's just, I it's hate that It's a bad situation. situation. Man. Yeah. I don't want that. And, like, And for people who are going to compare it to the Jordan Love Aaron Rodgers, Jordan Love was so freaking raw coming out of Utah State. Utah State, right? Uh, Utah State, yeah. Yeah, Utah State. Um, th- th- and Aaron Rodgers was an MVP. He won two MVPs after, I believe. Yeah, This isn't the same situation. Kirk Cousins has never been as good as Aaron Rodgers, coming off mm-hmm. a huge injury. Mm-hmm. And now he's getting whatever the situation is. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. <laughs> it's nowhere close. Look, just off the plain fact, Jordan Love was, what, fucking 20, 21 years old maybe? Michael Penix is... Already an older cat. I want to say he's like 23, 24, 24. years old. Yeah. <laughs> he's not that young. So it's not like he can just wait on the bench, bro. Like Jordan Jordan Love is 24 right now. And he's been in the league he's how 25. many years? 25. Yeah, he's been in the league like four years. Yeah, come on. Like you're, you're telling me that four years from now when Michael Penix is 28, he's going to get his chance? I highly doubt that. The clock is ticking with him. It's just a bad situation. Look, they have a great roster, though. Um, as long as they get it right early with Kirk Cousins' health and, you know, do some things with the weapons around him, like Zach Robinson does some nice, interesting things with the pieces that he has, I have faith that they can breeze past this fucking division, bro. This division is light work. Um it's it's more than capable of winning. The NFC is weak. I'm going to keep on saying that. I'm going to sound like a broken record. They can get in here, get a home playoff game, 
get get some no, uh, some noise going in Atlanta and make a little mini run, bro. Because the difference with Derek Carr and Kirk Cousins, who I really do feel like they're pretty similar, and one of them is better on every different day, whatever. Kirk Cousins is in a better situation. I l- love the roster a lot more, specifically the offense, a lot more than what Derek Carr has. Like, I just love the pieces, bro. And some, it's the difference in the pieces as far as like, hey, the pass game's not going. Our offensive line's not blocking good this uh, this week. Let's hand the ball off to Bijan because Bijan is just a fucking playmaker. He's going to be able to get get some things going for us. You know, and the one thing the Falcons have too, and other than Olave, like you can throw the ball to Pitts and he could just go get you a touchdown. Same thing with Drake, Drake. London. I think Drake London again, a guy who's been categorized not as good as he should be. He might be a gem. Who knows? Yeah. But Juan, I need you to. I need you to face the music. What do you think? Over or under? Oh, uh, over easily. Yeah, we're going both over. Yeah, I would hope so. I mean, I feel like it's been their division for three, two. For the last two years, yeah. and they just can't win it. Like it's like it's right there. Hey, it's right freaking there. You could take it, and it's like nope. I don't want it. <laughs> yeah, no, you take it. Yeah. No, you take it. Okay, let's go to the last team, Max. Let's go to the Carolina Panthers. Uh, Dave Canals is the new head coach coming over for from Tampa Bay, correct? I believe yeah, so. Tampa, yeah, Tampa Bay. Um, I'm gonna suck at saying this name. Offensive coordinator Brad is Idzik. Um, yeah, yeah. There you go, Isaac. 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 Yeah, DC. Uh, Injero Avero. <laughs> there you go. Uh, in it. 2023. Uh, they went two and 15. They had the worst record in football, and they didn't even get their number one overall pick because that was given to the Bears. Uh, the over under five and a half wins. Let me start with this. This has this team has the best chance, I think, of any to go first, worst to first. Yeah. I truly believe that. And that doesn't say – that's not me, like, ringing endorsement for this team. It's more of a state of the overall division. And they added a lot of stuff. I will say that. They got a lot of pieces, and we couldn't even list them all. They got one of my favorite players, Xavier Leggett. Who's her, Jonathan unfortunately. Brooks. Unfortunately. Yeah, but not not bad, not badly. Yeah. He'll play. Uh, Deontay Johnson, Robert Hunt was a big one. You could get a good alignment, and they really didn't lose much. I think Jeremy Chen and maybe one other guy, um, Frankie Frankie uh, Frankie Luvu. Luvu, who's a good player. He's a good yeah. player. Both went to Washington, which kind of right. scares me because Dan Quinn's going to have <laughs> some fun. Yeah. Uh, this is this discussion, and unfortunately, I, I hate to have it. Like, what's Bryce Young going to be, right? Bryce Young was Juan's number one quarterback, a lot of people's number one quarterback. He was so fun. He was he's small. He can move. <laughs> he's I'm a just saying what people said. He's a munch. Yeah, whatever. It was a bad rookie year. And it was bad for a few things, in my opinion. It was kind of, hey, I had a lot of concerns about him being small, like really small. Like, hey, Kyler Murray's small, but I was like, well, you know, he's – arguably the most athletic person on his team, right? That's not Bryce Young. Bryce Young right. is not athletic. Yeah. Doesn't have a big arm. And first of all, got banged up. You're like already worried about that. And like I said, they were like, hey, if we're going to make you a bus, here's the path. Let's do it. They did it. So I'm scared. I'm scared about this team. Obviously, the division's not that good. Our, it'd be pretty hard to be just as bad a second year. But what do you think, one? I'm not that excited about them. Um, I I didn't not even the defense anymore. No, they lost um, Brian Burns due the trade. Oh um, yeah, they did. Oh, we, that's a big one. I forgot. Yeah, they that. they lost they lost Brian Burns. Um, I didn't really like what they did in the draft. It, it, taking well, they away, couldn't do much. They, yeah, but they. You gotta hit him. You gotta hit him. This they're you don't important. like Leggett. I like Leggett. That's probably one of the only picks. But I didn't like the Jonathan Brooks pick uh, for him to be the first running back taken. Uh, I didn't agree with it. Uh, I thought there were a couple linemen that were on the board that they could have possibly went with uh, instead. 
and get a running back later on in the draft and get some value. Uh, it was a very, very deep tackle class. So that concerns me. Um, look, I don't I don't know what to think of uh, Dave Canals. I really don't. Um, he did some things in Tampa Bay, but I did not like what I seen from Bryce Young. Um, it was all the questions that we mainly had about him, which was his size, were quickly answered. And an offseason with a better coach and better weapons doesn't grow you inches. That doesn't help anything. And it may be an issue where he's literally just too small to play in the NFL. As sad and how unfair that is to say, it may be true. And you were you were screaming at the top of your lungs about it, like, hey, this guy's a fucking munchkin. It's not going to work out. And everyone, including myself, was like, Drew Brees, Kyler Murray, the league is less, uh, is less physical, and he can take some hits, and I've seen him take hits. No, it didn't work out, bro. And so... Well, I, and the arm talent one. I think we saw that it's it's not this big cannon of an arm. Yeah. He's not, not a physical. He's not a physical specimen when it comes to physical attributes, as far as throwing power, you know, fast twitchiness, like quickness, speed, like like Kyler Murray or long strides, like like Anthony Richardson. You know, like it's it's nothing like that. Um, we seen that quickly, and hopefully, deep down inside, I, I hope I'm wrong. I I hope he does come out and he fucking lights it on fire kind of like a trevor lawrence type of thing like tells everyone to shut the fuck up and this is you know like this is why i went number one in the draft because what makes it even worse max we talked about this all last year the fact that cj shroud is so fucking good makes it look even worse correct and and it's really crazy to me that that team went two and 15 it almost seems like I did something wrong. Like I almost want to check. I'm going to check the record again. Like, like there's no fucking way, right? That they went two and fifteen. <laughs> he did. Yes, they did. <laughs> but like that's what I'm saying. Like they they were so there's so much talent. Like the defense is like good players. The offense has good players. Like Thielen was really good for them last year, and it's kind of making me like scared. Like, hey, five and a half is not a lot of games. It's really not. You could win six games and still be bad. Hmm. Um. I think I'm going to go the over. I I am. I just think that's such a low. Again, I think Bryce Young is, you know, I don't want to say he's a bust, but I think he's definitely not worthy of the number one pick. I I didn't think it when he was picked. I still don't think it. So that's just my opinion of it. It's a, it's a team I had a lot of fun and hope for. I want to see my boy like it ball. But other than that, I'm not, it's, it's this team is, it is what it is. I think it's not that good of a team. They're in a rebuilding mode. They are. They're in a rebuilding mode with a wasted first overall pick for last year and paying for it. It's like they're they're a year behind of their rebuild. Like it's just it's very very upsetting, bro. Um, I'm gonna go under. I'm not even gonna second think it. This is the worst division in football. I stand by that until they prove otherwise. I went three out of the four teams in this division to go under, and I'm pretty confident about it. The Really, the only one that I'm excited about and have faith in is the Atlanta Falcons. Everyone else has way too many question marks, bro. It's, you know, it's question marks at the quarterback position. It's question marks at the coaching position, you know, um, don't have faith in it. So under for the Carolina Panthers. Yeah, I'm going over just because I think it's it's going to be hard to be that bad twice. Yeah. But I've been wrong before. We'll see. <laughs> Plus, what do you think of their owner? Oh, uh, he's annoying. <laughs> he's really annoying. You know, Don't you I, think? Yeah, he's he's kind of like. he's just, he, he wants to just, he like he wants instant gratification where it's like, nah, right. dude. Yeah. It don't work. It yeah. don't work like that, unfortunately. And you would think you would think that coming coming from the owner that they did have that was racist as shit. Uh, coming from him, it's like it's a it's a 
An great, improvement? Yeah, like going to be an improvement, but it really wasn't, dude. Like, he's just as annoying. Maybe he's not racist. Um, I doubt that. I know that. you don't follow baseball, but there's an owner called Steve Cohen of the Mets. And he came in and he just started throwing money around and the Mets like tanked. And I feel like that's what this guy's doing. He said, we're going to throw money. We're going to throw draft picks. And I get, he's definitely not a bad owner in the sense like, Hey, he's not willing to do what it takes, but he does too much. It's like, yeah, you're cool. All you need to do as an owner in the NFL is spend money and let the guys do their jobs. Stop meddling with shit. Cause he was meddling with Deshaun Watson. He's meddled to get Bryce young. And I and there were so many reports that Frank Wright won as CJ Stroud. Yeah. And and uh, I think you were on the boat of Frank Wright didn't deserve to get fired. I don't think so. I don't know. It's just it was hard. It was a tough situation. If if the owner wants that guy and you don't believe in him, I guess you should never been the coach. But the owner forced someone on you. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's like a variable thing. It's like front office was making moves and the coach just did not agree with it. And he got stuck with a bad roster and guys that he didn't want, you know, not on the same page. Uh, okay, that's going to do it. Let's go ahead and rank the teams uh, that we think are. I am going, to, going to go Atlanta, New Orleans, Carolina, Tampa. I'm going almost the same. I'm going to go Atlanta, New Orleans, Tampa Bay, Carolina last again. I think there's going to be a lot of 6 and 10 or 6 and 11 teams. <laughs> yeah, like, it's, it's the worst big... division. What what's another yeah. what what no, division is, is is uh c- c- it has a chance to be the worst division besides them. AFC South, but I don't even I think there's like there's so much more young and like youth yeah. in there. Yeah, like it's going to be a battle. It's going to be a fucking battle. Hey, NFC. I can see the NFC West kind of struggling besides the Niners. Yeah, the Niners. Correct. Yeah. No, because I don't know. The Rams are really competent. No, I take that back. The no. Rams and Niners will be good. Yeah. And I don't think the Seahawks will be bad one. I don't we'll know. see. There's always some weird shit, but it seems like oh, this. AFC East could be bad. Like really? Patriots, Jets. Jets. I don't think so, though. I don't think they will be. Yeah, I think it's the South. We're. I think we're just convincing ourselves more and more that it's this yeah. division. All right, uh, that's gonna do it, folks. Uh, we appreciate you guys rocking with us. Uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, comment down below any thoughts, opinions that you guys have. Uh, look, football season is around the corner. Hit that subscribe button. We do podcasts like this if you guys like this type of format. Also, if you guys more like a quick breakdown, film breakdown type type of content, we do that as well. We call them MJC Originals. Right now, we're doing a series on MJC Gems. They're basically uh, some of the most underrated players in the NFL. Yeah. Um, Underappreciated, too. Underappreciated, guys. Uh, offense and defense. So check those out. The last two that we've came out with is Alex Smith, edge rusher, and Jaden Reed, wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers. Alex Highsmith. Alex Highsmith. Sorry. What did I say? What did I say? <laughs> Alex Smith, I think. <laughs> My bad. My bad if I said Alex Smith. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I miss her. It's still late. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, check those out, man. Okay. Uh, you won't be disappointed if you're a football fan. All right. Until next time, we're out. Peace.